Hey guys, it's Ronnie here from Southern Food Junkie. Today, we're going to show you how to make a sourdough starter with potato flakes. I've made the bread previous, but I didn't show you how to make the starter. And today we're going to show you that. So let's get down and show you how we do it. So the first thing you're going to need is a container to put it in. I like to use these ball mason jars. Uh, this is the uh, one quart size here. Um, also, you're gonna need a lid. It's recommended not to use anything that's metal. Uh, it can react with the uh, solution that we're making here. So, uh, I like to use a paper towel. I just simply use a paper towel and I fold it in a half like this. And then I just simply place it on here like this. And I just got a rubber band and I will put it over the lid just like this. Once you get it formed, it'll stay on there. This will allow it to breathe, uh, cause this needs to breathe. It'll produce uh, a gas in here, carbon dioxide. As uh, the yeast is uh, building, it'll bubble a little bit. And this will keep stuff out of it, such as uh, whatever you got in your house, dust, dirt, flies, gnats, but it'll also let it breathe. Let's go over our ingredients we're gonna need. So the star of this show is potato flakes. These are dehydrated potato flakes. Um, this is the brand I use. You can use whatever brand you want. Uh, we're going to use three tablespoons of potato flakes. You're going to use three tablespoons of granulated white sugar. We're using uh, Flashman's Active Dry Yeast. This is just the original yeast. This is what jump starts. Uh, this is what jump starts this sourdough bread. Um, this is a, a offtake of the traditional sourdough, where you use flour and water only. That is a wild, 100% wild yeast. This starts with commercial yeast, but then after it's after it grows, after you know many weeks and months and years however long you want to keep this it grows wild yeast on it we're using two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast of active dry yeast and then we're going to need one cup of lukewarm water so let's go grab that and we'll be right back when i'm getting my lukewarm water i like to use my instant read thermometer and just run it under the tap water now that we got our lukewarm water we're going to pour it into our glass container Next, we're going to add in our potato flakes. Then we're going to add in our sugar. And last, we're going to add in our yeast. All right, so we got all of our ingredients inside of our mason jar. We got our water in there that's warm, sugar, potato flakes, and our yeast. That's pretty much it. Now we're going to use a wooden spoon. It's hard to find something that fits inside this mason jar, so I just used the back of a wooden spoon to stir it with. Again, you don't want to use anything that's metal in here, uh, that's reactive. If you have uh, something that's plastic, um, I'm thinking of like a hard plastic straw, that could work, um, but I just use these. And next thing we're gonna do is mix it up, and then I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like, and then we'll give you some more tips and tricks at the end of this video. Next thing we're gonna do is use the back of this spoon. We're gonna mix all the ingredients up really well. One of the main concerns here is getting this yeast broken down and mixed up. This is kind of what it looks like once you get it all mixed up. Here we have the brand new one that we just made sitting beside an old one that I already have. You can kind of see what the texture looks like. All right, so we're pretty much done with this. We're going to put our, uh, our napkin back on top of it or our lid, whichever you prefer. You could also use um, a lid off of like if you buy like the quart size of the garlic, the little plastic lid that screws on that, or, or a mayonnaise jar like Duke's mayonnaise or Hellman's mayonnaise, you can drill a few holes into that and use that kind of lid as well. But I find that this lid works perfect. It's cheap. Um, it's pretty accessible most of the time. What I want to mention is you're going to leave this in a warm place. Uh, just set it beside your stove or somewhere out of the way. You don't want to put this in the refrigerator yet. We want no yeast to work off and to build up. You're gonna come in here and stir this every single day. And on the fifth day, we're gonna feed it. 
So you're going to do the same thing, uh, steps six through eight that I'll post in below. You'll give it uh, three tablespoons of potato flakes, three tablespoons of sugar, and one cup of warm water on the fifth day. Uh, so in the fifth day, you'll you'll feed it that, that morning and then let it sit for about six to eight hours. And then you'll take a cup of the starter out of that that you just fed. And that cup is what you'll use to make your bread with. Uh, I'll leave a link up above on how to make the bread. And that'll take you through making the bread. So you can do this um, every, five, every three to five days. You can feed it like this. Uh, once you get done with that one cup, place it in the refrigerator. And it'll kind of slow the yeast down. I've had these, I've gone a month without feeding these and it still worked out good. They recommend every three to five days. If you want to make bread every single day, you would just leave it out and not put it in the refrigerator and every morning you would get up and feed it uh, with those steps six to eight. And then in the evening, you would take your one cup of solution off and then uh, use that to make your bread. There's also other things that you can do with a solution if you're not making bread. They call that discard. Some people will pour one cup off uh, down the drain. Uh, you can give it to a friend who is interested in making bread but don't want to make starter. You can also make uh, discard pancakes. You can make cinnamon rolls with it. Um, you can make uh, you know regular sourdough yeast rolls. There's several things you can do with it if you don't want to just pour it down the drain. Um, if, I, if I'm not going to be making bread every five days, I typically leave mine sitting in the refrigerator until I'm ready to make bread. I'll get it out, feed it that morning, and then that evening I'll get my one cup of solution off, and then I'll start making bread. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like it, leave us a comment below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you stick around and follow us for more recipes, reviews, restaurant reviews, and fun adventures. Thank you for watching and also check out one of these two videos that's about to pop up right here. I'm sure you'll like those just as much and remember let's get food junk.